the debt limit? Should we? Should the markets worry about this, Mr. Ryan? I don't think the markets should worry too much. We will pay our bonds. We will pay our bills. But it's going to be a bumpy ride until that moment happens. It's not inconceivable to me that we go a little bit past the X date because I think Treasury can prioritize. But once you get it prioritizing, the politics gets really ugly. Yeah, but why go, why go past that date if there's nervousness in the market and you just don't understand why the U.S. is in the state? That is just how the politics of these things typically work. I, I've been involved in a number of these deals. Yeah. It is not rare to have fiscal reforms coupled with a debt limit increase. Uh, I don't think that's asking too much, by, frankly, by House Republicans. Uh, I was part of the BCA in 2011, and I was part of an agreement in 2013 that, that fixed this. So we have a debt problem. We have a debt crisis coming. It's a good idea to get a, something to get under control. And it's not going to be big entitlement reforms like yeah. Medicare and Social Security, but maybe they can get some fiscal caps, spending caps in place. Right. But it's, it's, it's clear the Biden administration doesn't want to do that, so I think you're going to have a little bit of bring some yeah. ship here. But at the end of the day, our bonds are going to be paid. Okay, but is it right to bring it until the very Probably. end? Probably. That's usually how these things go. I, I I've done two or three of these deals. It was always like the day of or the day before. Right. It would surprise me if they saw this much earlier than that. Okay. But at the end of the day, we're going to make right. good on our bonds. Our full faith and credit will be maintained and intact. So the message to the markets is stay cool. Even stay if cool. You're going to see volatility. We're going to pay our bonds. It may be a little bumpy. Maybe just don't watch TV for a day or two. Okay, well, except for Bloomberg, definitely watch Bloomberg. Yeah, sorry. You don't, you don't have to watch anything else. Yeah. Um, McCarthy's strategy on this, how, how do you see that developing in the coming well, months? Well, I mean, his members, which I used to manage the same conference, yeah. um, want to see a budget advance that actually gets our fiscal house in order. So I'm happy that we have this revived concern about our fiscal problems. Um, but, but you're not going to get a giant package through something like this, a debt right. limit increase. So the question is, can you get some pretty good incremental fiscal reforms in place like, say, spending caps or some kind of financial mechanism to help get our debt going in the right direction. And you think we'll, we'll see what that? it looks like. I think it's possible. And it, the reason I think it's possible is because that's what we've done before in the past. So we'll see what happens then. But at the end of the day, we're going to really have to get serious about our debt crisis. It's every modern country has this problem. And we can't keep piling on this kind of a debt because we're the world reserve currency. We're not acting like a reserve currency, frankly. Or, or is it playing with fire doing it at this time of market volatility because inflation is up and actually the, the Fed is raising it, rates it's, quite It's suboptimal, I would say, but it is what it is. This always happens, especially when you have divided government. So hopefully a cool heads can prevail and hopefully the administration will agree to some kind of fiscal um, reforms that will help us put our debt in the right trajectory. Is monetary policy on the right, right trajectory right now? I don't think they have a choice. Yeah, I think I think January's numbers were pretty clear. Uh, it's going to be a lot harder to get inflation from five to two than it was from eight to five. And the Fed doesn't have a choice. What worries me is the fiscal policies that we could put in place, supply side fiscal policies, make tax cuts permanent, um, increase labor market participation through immigration reforms, things like that. Those aren't going to happen. So fiscal policy is not going to be improved from a supply side standpoint. So it's really all on the Fed. And my guess is you probably won't get out of this without a recession. Get out of this being getting to 2% inflation. It's going to take a long time, longer than people thought and hoped. And it's going to be a lot harder for the Fed to get to 2% than it was from 8 to 5. So you think, is there a possibility that they have to crush the economy to get to 2%? I mean, I don't like to use the word crush, but no it'd be, it would surprise me that we could get out of this, get to 2% without uh, a recession. And the Fed cannot back off that 2% target. If they do, they'll lose their credibility. They know this. So that's why I think their, their terminal rate's probably going to be a little higher today than what we thought it was, say, a month or two ago. But recession with a lot of job losses or what kind well, of recession? Well, let's hope I mean, it's been, it's been amazing resilient, the job economy. Um, but if unemployment gets to a, something with a five handle, I think the Fed's going to have a little harder time getting consensus. So I think it's, it's in Jay Powell's interest to get as many rate increases as he can right now. I frankly think they should have stayed with 50 basis point raises and not gone to 25 I think that head faked the market. It sort of pump faked the market. Hopefully they'll go back to 50 because get it now as fast as you can. Get the rate increases now that you have a consensus on the Fed. Because if we start seeing unemployment really starting to creep up past 4%, then I think it's going to be really dangerous and difficult. I guess the danger is that there's a monetary policy lag. There is. And then that means a mistake, and then they have to Yeah, and then they overshoot. The Fed's been overshooting. For, that's, that's the story of the Fed. But I don't think the Fed really had a good thesis on how inflation works. They had the, the great moderation baked into their models. So I think the Fed was a little too late. They, 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 they kept rates too low. They had too many asset purchases. Now they're making up for that. 
but it's really clear it is stubborn. And with decoupling happening, with delinking our economies with China to some degree and deglobalization happening to some degree, that stuff's all inflationary. So there's structural inflation baked into the cake, which means it's going to be harder, like I said, for the Fed to get inflation closer to 2% than, than getting it from 8 to 5 like they've already done. How would you describe the mood in Washington, D.C. right now? From, from the outside, it seems like, I mean, we're not talking about not getting along. This is, you know, even more than that. Is yeah. there anything that you can, both both parties can agree on to get done the next I year? wish we had better a better political climate. Our politics are pretty unserious. Um, I just put out a book at the American Enterprise Institute showing how to get the debt under control to preserve the dollars of reserve yeah. currency we're not doing those things because we have unserious politics. Yep. The, the one thing I would say to that, though, is we are forging a bipartisan consensus on how to deal with China. I have a, a lot of confidence in party leaders in Congress right now, in this new committee chaired by a guy named Mike Gallagher, yep. that there will be a bipartisan consensus on how to deal with China. So that is something that I think you'll see us working well together. There are going to be some bipartisan things, but it's mostly going to be re revolving around our foreign policy, our China policy and our Ukraine policy, I think, will still be bipartisan. Okay. What will happen in Ukraine? More weapons, more money? I think more, mo more, more weapons, more money. There's still a lot of support for that. Both sides? Both sides. Is there a limit to that as we get into the presidential well, election? Well, there's a limit to how much our defense industrial base can produce. Right. And there's a limit to how much we can get to the field on time to the Ukrainians. So, yes, there's a limit based on capacity. But I don't think there's a limit to our support, broad Republican support, broad Democrat support, for supporting our friends in Ukraine, to standing up against Russia. And there's obviously a lot of consensus on how to deal with China. What, who do you think will be the Republican <laughs> candidate? I think it's going to be somebody not named Donald Trump. Uh, we know that we lose with Trump. We lost the House in 18. We lost the White House and the Senate in 20. We lost the Senate again in 2022. We didn't win as nearly as many seats in the House as we should have in 2022, largely because of Trump. Our voters more or less know this. So I think the fact that we want to win, we know we need to nominate somebody not named Trump. And right. if we do, I think we'll win the I think we'll win the right. So house. who, if not Trump? I, I, it's too early to say. I just don't know the answer to that question. D does there's this big investigation and, of course, the reaction from News Corp and, and Fox on how they dealt with allegations of the election. What's your take on that? Uh, Donald Trump lost the election. It's really clear. But Fox Period. should have. Fox well, there's a lawsuit. I don't want to get into that pending lawsuit issues, but. But there are some opinion hosts that made their opinions, and there are people who, on behalf of the President of the United States, made claims. Those are newsworthy claims. They, weren't, they were faulty claims. But when the President of the United States has his lawyers saying things, that is a newsworthy, newsworthy event. Um, those claims were false. Donald Trump did not win the election, and he spread conspiracy theories to the contrary to that. And we all know, know that. 